Hey everyone, hope you guys enjoyed my totally authentic review of the Super Mario Brothers movie. That definitely wasn't an April Fool's prank of the Sonic movie, but after discussing the idea of video game movies with one of the very first and most infamous one, I think now it's time to talk about the newest video game adaptation to grace the world, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. As stated countless times before, I am one of those massive Sonic fans that considers this series to be one of his all-time favorite video game franchises. So naturally, I'm curious about any movie that would feature the character. Going back to the first movie once again, I felt the first film for what it is, it was surprisingly decent. I do believe that it was a film that was ultimately in the grand scheme of things saved due to a great decision to delay the film in order to fix what was possibly going to be Disney remake level of awfulness for Sonic. Though as a longtime fan, there is a part of me that still wanted a little more. But seeing how good of an intro the first movie was for Sonic, it gave me hope that a sequel could be a huge improvement. This time they don't have the pressure of redesigned stuff from scratch, and from everything prior to this film's release, it looked like a pretty promising sequel, with having more of a focus on Sonic and introducing some longtime favorites in film form. With that in mind, I was genuinely looking forward to a Sonic sequel. And you know, after witnessing a renaissance of fantastic films like the Batman and Everything Everywhere all at once, there's just also something really special about seeing one of your all-time favorite characters given justice in the mix of all of this. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a huge improvement over the first movie, and dare I say, the first video game movie I would say is 100% actually really good. Not a perfect movie, with a few gripes here and there, but for Sonic standards, this more or less satisfies the desires of what to expect and want from a movie based on this series. Sonic 2 of course centers around Sonic again, this time teaming up with Tails to defeat Robotnik, returning once again, this time with a new partner known as Knuckles. It's about as basic as you can get with a plot for something like this, and what makes it work is that it delivers on what you want from a film featuring Sonic the Hedgehog. Like the first film, this movie nails the characterization of Sonic with Ben Swartz still being pretty spot on as the obnoxious yet endearing little hedgehog. And cause there's no redesign controversy this time, Sonic looks as about as good as he can get with the CGI here. What makes this movie a massive improvement over the first film is that instead of it just being a standard kids affair in terms of Sonic being a character interacting with the real world, it instead becomes this big adventure that I will honestly say is about as accurate to the games in terms of story and character as you can expect for something like this. Yes, they do change things here and there, but unlike a lot of other adaptations, these changes aren't too drastic to the core of Sonic, and within the context of the movie, they actually work really well. In fact, I say it improves upon some stuff by taking elements exclusive to the first film and making it tie into an element of the game that feels more natural as a fun little callback, but also works as part of this new continuity that's exclusive to this film. Not to mention all the easter eggs and references to the entire series were great to look for, showing that the people behind this movie did care about the game series and putting in a lot of deep cuts without over relying on them either. Instead of just keeps a steady focus on the main cast of characters, which if you were to tell me we were getting a film of Sonic that actually has these characters feeling faithful, I'm not sure if I would have believed you, but seeing it for myself, I'm super ecstatic about it. Starting with Jim Carrey returning as Robotnik, I was hoping with the original casting that he would end up being best case scenario for this character, and fortunately he is. Jim Carrey delivers a very cartoonish performance, but it's all the more welcome, as he's even crazy crazier as this version of Robotnik in this film than he was in the last one. He has the manic energy that complements Sonic's sparky personality quite well as the iconic arch nemesis. Though not only is he really fun to watch, I also found a lot of great enjoyment from seeing Tails in this movie. The dynamic between him and Sonic is the main heart of this movie, with Tails being the young sidekick who looks up to Sonic while having his own moments that showcase his intelligence very well with his emphasis on inventing things. Also, props to the team for bringing Colleen O'Shaughnessy, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, the voice 
this lovable fox and she does a fantastic job not only performing as this character but working off really well with Sonic here. Even with a different voice actor in mind, seeing her work off of Ben Swartz's Sonic feels really natural to actually watching these characters on screen. But I can't go on without discussing the most interesting yet also hype cast of having Bloodsport himself, Idris Elba, as Knuckles. Man, you want to talk about a great reintroduction to the characters? This is it. Elba is fantastic as Knuckles the Echidna. His voice already fits a very rough and gruff character like him, though the writing also helps too. Knuckles is a tough character and takes things pretty seriously, but he always had sort of a gullible nature to him, which later games emphasize a bit too much, while not really taking him that seriously. This does take him seriously, as Elba's performance still gives that character a sense of dignity to him. He just doesn't always realize when he's naive on certain things. Do I look like I need your power? He makes for a great counter sidekick to Eggman and an excellent foil for Sonic to fight against. It all makes for an immensely entertaining movie that sounds like the best Sonic movie of all time that's a perfect 10 out of 10 film, right? Well, not quite. While Sonic 2 does set its focus mostly on being a faithful adaptation to Sonic, there's a few gripes I have here and there. Main one being the human characters from the first movie return, and before I discuss them negatively, I don't think these characters themselves being in the film is necessarily a bad thing. I understand why they're here being from the first movie, and to their credit, all the actors do a fine job, and can even be humorous at certain points. The issue more so comes from the fact that there's a wedding subplot, and there are maybe one too many scenes where it just focuses on that for a bit, and it doesn't really work. It just distracts from the main focus of the movie to where I just want to see Sonic and his team more. So it feels like you're waiting a bit too long for them at points. It's not the worst movie to do this. Even the scenes themselves are not Tom and Jerry 2021 level of awfulness. But at the same time, when it got to like the third sequences that goes on for like a good 10 to 15 minutes without Sonic and the rest of the gang, I just wish they either replaced it with more cool Sonic stuff or just cut it out altogether. It's needless padding that didn't need to be in the movie. Even despite that though, it didn't bother me too much because the stuff that I came to see more than makes up for it. I guess if there's any other fault I may stay there are moments that do feel like it's made for kids, but in the case of this movie, it's not really a bad thing when you consider that Sonic is technically a gaming series for kids, and some of those scenes actually aren't too bad all things considered. Though what really made me like, and even to a stronger extent love this movie, is by the third act, this is everything I wanted and hoped for with a Sonic movie. Without revealing too much, this finale has all the type of action and character dynamics that I've always found appealing about Sonic as a franchise. It's an exhilarating third act that for a diehard fan like myself, I had nothing but the biggest smile on my face. The only thing that was missing was just a brief moment. There should have been some use of Sonic Heroes by Crush 40. If it wasn't for those subplots pulling the film down, it would have been perfect. But as it is, it's another one of those movies that's absolutely satisfying just on the basis of how it treats its source in a way that's still a competent film. So much so that I would honestly say that this is the first video game movie I can say is really good and even at time a great movie as far as adaptations go. As someone who's been wanting to see movies based on games actually turn out good, this is honestly a dream come true. And to have it be a Sonic movie of all things, a franchise that has so many ups and downs in terms of games, and almost had a movie that was on the level of a Disney remake, it's a miracle that this movie is as good as it is. But when you've been a fan as long as I have, it's great to see those miracles happen. I don't think this film will win over anyone who never liked Sonic to begin with, but if you're someone who at least mildly likes Sonic at any capacity, this movie is quite a blast. For kids, it's great. For fans of the series like myself, it's an awesome experience. 
For a series that has such a strange reputation and status over the 30 years it's been around, to have a feature film of his turn out to be a fateful rad video game adaptation is a definite win for Sonic fans everywhere. So take that for what it's worth. The Sonic fan in me really wants me to give it a higher rating than I currently am, but as it is, Some really good stuff. A definite must watch if you're a fan of the series. Definitely check it out when you get a chance and I'll see you guys again next time. Later.